Hi, my name is Nicole. Hi, my name is Dania. My name is Shao. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the Dope Student, Student Podcast. Podcast. Who do we have here today? What's up, y'all? My name is Bruce. All right, so today we're going to be asking some questions. First question is, can you tell us more about your journey from building model houses to becoming a designer, general contractor, and expediter? What inspired you to pursue this path? Oh, wow. All right, so what inspired me? Um, actually, I was approached by a buddy in, uh, what was that? It was uh, middle school, high school, high school. And, um, yeah, he was like, yeah, if you, if you do these classes, uh, you get you get out half the day from school. So I was like, all right, bet, let's let's do it. And I and I jumped in, I chose architecture, and I was like, all right, this is it. And uh, the first thing that got me interested was the modeling. Um, I like to build stuff. So I would cut out things, I would put things together, and I would do that all day long. And then eventually down the road, I was like, all right, design, that's cool. Maybe we could do these bedrooms, the bathrooms, the layouts. So yeah, it was, it was real interesting, but that was the start of it. What were some of... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> what were some of the key milestones in your career, such as obtaining your general contractor license and starting your own business? How did these achievements shape your professional journey? Um, well, getting the GC license, that was a huge accomplishment, um, just because then that gave me the ability to pick up projects and do things on my own, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I don't know. It's... Uh, one more time, repeat the question. Um, what were some of the key milestones in your career, such as obtaining your general contractor license and starting your own business? How did these achievements shape your f professional career? Key I mean, milestones. So it, it, it gave me the ability to work on my own. Um, like the key milestones themselves was basically just, you know, getting the first job, getting into the field, getting a little bit of experience, but all that stuff coming together gave me the ability to kind of do my own thing. So yeah, those, those milestones, they meant a lot, even though they were small. You mentioned your expertise in construction and running job sites. Can you share a specific project or experience that highlights your skills in these areas? Yeah, actually, we just got finished doing um, a make safe uh, make safe construction on a building. So it was falling apart and the city said, hey, we're gonna demo this building. Um, so it was my first time getting my team in, doing all new joists, uh, redoing lintels, and just making sure like the, the structure was solid, you know what I mean? So it's not gonna fall and hurt anybody. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's pretty dope, it's pretty dope. What aspects of structural and field implementation do you find most exciting and fulfilling? Can you share an example of a challenging project that you enjoyed working on? Yeah, so the portion that I enjoy most is the connections. Um, early on, I was, I don't want to say obsessed, but I love learning how things connected with each other. How does the wood connect to the masonry? You know, how does the masonry connect to the steel? Um, so, yeah, that's, you know, it's some of my favorite parts about it. Uh, that project that I was just talking about, we had to do a lot of that. It was a lot of joist replacement. So it was cool to see, you know, going from the design portion of things where you're just designing it out and this is how it should go to being in the field and then making sure the guys are doing it correctly. Of course, I'm using, uh, you know, experienced professionals, but me being the GC on site, um, it's my job to just to make sure that everything goes smoothly and it goes timely. Why do you believe design is a crucial aspect of your field that students should be aware of? What opportunities do you see for young designers in the construction industry? Design is important because you want your project to, to one, meet the building codes, but you want to step into the space and love it. You want to step into the bedroom and, and go, wow, like I can't wait to go to sleep in this room. So design is what's going to take a project from, okay, this is, you know, it's a standard project to, wow, this is something that I enjoy being, you know, I, I enjoy being here all day. Um, and then also it helps you during the job site. The guys, you know, sometimes it's when you're in the thick of things and, you know, your things are moving really quickly, it's a lot easier to just look at the floor plans and go, okay, you know, I'm just going to go by this design and it's going to make my life a little bit easier. It's going to save us some time, you know what I mean, that kind of thing. So design plays a really big part in the construction itself, because without design, you're kind of just, you're just doing different things, you know, and you're trying things out, you're figuring things out, and sometimes 
that time is, uh, is really important. What advice would you give to the students considering a career in your field, and how can they stay motivated and continually learn to seize the opportunities available? I would say jump on it um, and stay motivated. Uh, maybe on Instagram, you know, look up a couple contractors, you know what I mean, guys that you like seeing what they do, whether it's electrical, plumbing, mechanical. Um, yeah, the, the trades industry is great. Architecture in itself is really great. I'm actually... I'm looking for young people to work with myself. So, yeah, the sky's the limit. Um, test yourself and uh, fill out your boundaries and then surpass them. You know, always get better. How do you think real-world experiences such as internships or on-site work benefit students in their education and career choices? Can you share a personal experience where hands-on learning made a significant difference for you? Yeah, my first time being on the job site and uh, actually seeing concrete being placed. Um, sometimes it's, it's, you know, it's, it sounds like it's a simple thing, you know, just, okay, I'm going to put this block on top of this block, put some mortar in between. Um, but when you get in the field and you actually see what it's, you know, how, how that's done, you, you, you're grabbing different tools to grab the mud, you're mixing up mud, it's a lot more work than you think. So that in the field experience, that's the best kind of learning. You've had, opportuni you've had the opportunity to critique architecture students at Jefferson. What lessons have you learned from these interactions, and how do you think they benefit the students? Um, sometimes when you're going through the schooling of it, it can, it can get a little whimsical. Um, but when you bring in people who are in the field and they're looking at these plans, you know, they can start uh, critiquing in a way of, making sure the plans work in real life. You know what I mean? Because when you're in school, sometimes you do things, you know, I'm not sure how that's going to work, uh, but, you know, it looks really cool. So when you bring in people like that, like uh, like us, for instance, um, then we're able to look at it and go, okay, how was that built? And then we can ask different questions that maybe your professors aren't asking. So it was it was a really unique experience. It, it, uh, it just, it allowed us to just see what the younger the younger generation is getting into with the design industry. You mentioned that you love snor snowboarding and have been skateboarding for 15 years. How did these hobbies influence your work-life balance and creativity in your professional life? Well, they're necessary to keep your sanity. Um, when you're running a business, when you're running multiple businesses, think, things can get crazy. So it's good to... Uh, to lean into your hobbies. Snowboarding is something that, you know, only three or four months out of the year we can get into it. So, like, I really enjoy those couple months where we get to just kind of not pull away from work, but, you know, relax a little bit, enjoy ourselves. So, yeah, skateboarding, snowboarding, all the action sports are my favorite. Last question for today is, you have mentioned about figuring out social media as part of your career journey. How has social media impacted your business and professional growth? Any tips for students on leveraging social media for their careers? Um, social media plays a big part, actually. We get a lot of like business and customers through Instagram specifically. Um, it's good because it, it, it gives people you know, a window to see how your business is run to see what kind of products you deliver, uh, to see what kind of person that you are. So, you know, it just gives more people the opportunity to see who you are and decide if they want to do business with you. All right, before we end off, we would like to ask, do you have any social media pages where we could reach you out on? Yes, uh, underscore Cheatham Drafting on Instagram. That's probably the best one to go for. All right, we would like to thank Bruce for coming out to the Dobson Podcast. Thank you so much for watching another episode. Bye. Thanks for having me, guys. Bye.